Apologize. The, and the one suggestion which we can implement that because we ask for feedback at the end also from people and one I thought very good suggestion was that in our visuals to include some uh, some examples of like landscape art or art forms because we tried to stress that orally we didn't want to have people think statue mm -hmm. um, but the to have some visualizations too. And I thought that was a really good point. We need to do that. So um, by, by my records, the people, we have two, we have February 12th, which is on Zoom. Yeah. And we have February 15th in person again at the library. And Let's do the in-person one first because it's easier. By the records that we had a couple weeks ago, and I know these things could change, the people available were myself, Jen, Alyssa, Ellen, and Kate. Are you all still available? Mm -hmm. I'm still available. You said that's February 12th? Um, we're talking with the, first about the 15th because I think you are available. Ellen, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, good. That's the other library one. Yeah, yes. the 15th is the library and the 12th is on Zoom. And the 12th, Nancy, I think you are available. Yes. Uh, and Alyssa, Ellen, and Kate. Yeah. And so, I'll, I'll be there to. to okay, good. So what and we. I, I can also be there if you need my help then too. Okay. What we did is the three of us kind of met to uh, plan out who would do what and kind of walk ourselves through it. And I would suggest that that's probably useful to do, you know, like a day or two before. Now that we know that the overall plan works and Nancy, it was a skeleton of your plan that we used and it worked very well, that one that you had used originally for foundry. So that was great. Um, so that we can, um, get together to to do that. And I think we could probably do it on Zoom because you know, you'll have a sense of what it's about. And we built it as the kind of anchor for plant making that plan. We built it around the uh, PowerPoint that has been yeah. created over time um, to present the project and to present Pierce Island. So that was really the anchor of what right. we did, you know, we kind of explained, it, we went through it and explained things in it and discussed them and then really ultimately opened it up to that free form uh, situation where people contributed their thoughts. Um, so I apologize, I, I apologize that I was not able to attend. Obviously, if I were in the state, I would have been there. Is it? Is there anyone who was at the in-person one who is also available for the virtual one? Yes, I think um, both Kate and I. Wonderful. Oh. I would suggest, however, we can make it as similar as possible. So that we're getting out to Apple's engagement. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And one of the things I don't know if it's easy to show, but I it, thinking about how we're going to do the interactivity, I created a Padlet for the part that we we did interactively. And uh, let's see if you can we can show it so that you people will be familiar with it. So you don't have to. And I do want to apologize. I'm traveling that week. And so I actually on the 12th, I'm, you know, in transit. So can't do that. I had put down the 12th because uh, when I first saw the meetings yeah. and wrote to Sean Clancy with the email, um, I said, well, I could come to both of them or yeah, not knowing I'm even part of this committee, but I thought, well, yeah, would hear something different at each meeting. So yes, we will. We yeah. will, and that'll be interesting. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, the Zoom one is on Monday, the twelfth. That's right. right. Mm. Talking heads. Like, when did I send? You know, and I'm happy to attend yeah. the next 
two meetings as well, but I think it's better if I'm not presenting. I yeah, yeah. we appreciate that. But yeah. you can step in to clarify and yes. That's helpful. <laughs> so you do that. <laughs> um on Monday is it also six to seven thirty the Zoom? No, it's twelve oh. to one. We decided to do a noon time for people. Good idea. Yeah. No? Yeah. That's not like me. So many filing categories. So you, well, to one. you keep looking and would you be sending out like a Zoom link? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um and actually it, it it would be good for Sean to send a Zoom link to all of us. He has sent his people said they would be uh interested. He has sent them the Zoom link. So participants have the Zoom link. But now, we'll what I found is that it really helps to give personal invites to people because the people who I've seen send uh, sign up for these are often the people who I sent emails to about asking them to come. So please um, invite so, people that you know who you think would be interested. Mara took things to the button factory uh, to post, to try to, because remember we had that press release and I think Kate is right that if we have 10 people for each of these, it's a really nice size group, but we got to work a little to get yeah. some more yeah. people there. Uh, it's on the city's website. Actually, Kate, maybe if you have bandwidth, you could mention again on Monday. Yes. Um, yes, I will. And, you know, anybody that you think would be interested. And Chris, I can think of a cup because of my work at Alno, but I can think of a couple of sculptures that are not that are sculptures, but oh, they're really right. like things that yeah. take place in environments that would be um, good example. So who should I send them to? Uh, why don't you send them to me and I'll put them in the PowerPoint so we have it updated. Yeah, I mean, just that's good. There it is. Oh, yeah. I, want to, I want to share my screen so the folks see it. All right. So because we won't have those pads of paper around, um, this really asks the same question. You know, when you think of Pierce Island, uh, what comes to mind? And what people will do, if you haven't used this before, uh, we'll just give them that same link that Sean has. And on their own computers, Great. what they'll be able to do, and you'll be able to see it, everybody can see it, is to add things in. So click the little plus mark. And you just write something in, or you could put a picture in. You can oh, see the great. link, whatever you do. So okay. show up. <laughs> you do publish, <laughs> right? And then if somebody wants to add a comment onto your comment, um, okay. they can just do it right there. So that should work well for our Zoom, our Zoom people. Do you know how many people have signed up so far? For Zoom, I would say it's at least a half a dozen. Really? Maybe more. That's great. Yeah. I think it's probably 15, 10. Yeah. Just great. Memory. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can ask Monty to bump it up, like, you know, the Friday before onto the city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is good. He is good. So, um, actually, if for people who are, uh, gonna do that's live and so we can send you the link if you want to play around with it it's uh, nobody will see it right now except you and then we can erase everything you put into it but I think that'll work really well for yeah. you stop sharing yeah so two things that came up that night that were challenging questions that I think we don't have to answer tonight, but I wanted to raise them up so that we could start thinking about them. Uh, one is, uh, it was raised, should we limit this to like 
local artists, regional artists, New Hampshire artists. And it's, it's a question that always comes up. Should we narrow the pool? Um, and I know those of us who were there all sort of felt the same. We felt, no, we shouldn't narrow the pool. But this is something that this committee will have to decide and think about. And I don't know if you want to have any thoughts about that right now or any immediate reactions to it. I'd like to make a comment on that. Um, Jeff Cooper and I think it was Greg and maybe Ken Gold Goldman. I mean, they were uh, advocated very strongly that um, they weren't pleased with the Xi Jichen sculpture. Right. Uh, they, di they didn't like the sculpture, number one. Number two, they didn't like that it was someone who was uh, from not yeah. only not from New England, but not. I know she's originally from China and now lives in uh, California. California, but I don't know if she is now a citizen or not. And to me, it, when we were choosing, it didn't matter because we'd put out a RFP that was international. Um, but they, the, the artists who spoke and felt it should be a New England artist, if not a New Hampshire artist, you know, they were adamant. Um, you know, it, it's worth considering that there may be others who feel that way. Yes. Um, I feel we should have the best art possible. Um, and if it happened to be a, a regional artist, all the better, but um, they were very, very strong in their feelings and they're, I think it's worth paying attention to how people feel. Agreed. And that's why I wanted to put it up and to have a good, good rationale for it if we decide it should be open and Something I didn't say that night, but I remembered from when we did this at the state. Usually, if you ask artists the other way, do you want to be restricted out of a competition? Of course, no one wants to be restricted mm -hmm. out of a competition because they feel that they should have that opportunity. So it is a, you know. Mm -hmm. listen. Can I ask um, Nancy whether the foundry was limited? Because that was ultimately local artist, and it was not limited, correct? It was not limited, and uh, um, I don't believe we had international submissions, but we certainly had them from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think actually, Chris, you answered it quite well to the, um, said, no, we aren't, we, we haven't thought about limiting it, but if you were a local artist, wouldn't that be the thing that you'd want to emphasize? Right. Yeah. So I think yeah. our criteria builds that in a little bit. Not that you must be local, but that it's culturally relevant and locally, you know. Right. So I think that having the criteria maybe helps yeah, good with. Point. I really felt that. his pain. I mean, <laughs> as they say, as they say. <laughs> you know, and, and frustration. Sure. And, but. I think that we all articulated why that is a, unfor that would be an unfortunate limiting precedent to set. You know, although actually you're right, you know, showing how culturally relevant your vision was to the mm -hmm. area couldn't hurt. Yeah, should give you. Uh, now there's another way to do it too, and that is to give a competitive preference to someone from the region. So. If we were giving points to different things, you could give some additional points for someone from the region. I think the fact it's what you said that we have, we prize interactivity, we prize kind of knowledge of the region. It'll be easier for somebody theoretically, locally, to be competitive. Um, and yeah, I think I always struggle when we place limitations on things because it's very easy to draw a hard line and then have unintended con consequences. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's one of the challenges we've had in the ordinance with um, requiring everyone who serves locally to live locally in Portsmouth. When, um, especially in the arts community, we have so many people who can't afford to live here anymore, but still work here. And it's still really a part of our community, but they live outside community. We would have the same problem if you limited something to New Hampshire artists when we have so many that have moved to Kittery 
you know, so. Well, that's true. It's really, I mean, this is really a, a hard thing to balance. And so I think when you start placing limitations on something, you have to be extremely mindful and that's very difficult to do. You know, um, one of the things that uh, the New Hampshire State Arts Council, I believe they still do this, but really people appreciated was that the artists, I'm thinking of like Sarah Haskell, who lives in York, but who did a lot of work in New Hampshire, people who live in Vermont, but do a lot of work in the Upper Valley, that they were not limit, they were not excluded. Um, and when you think of it, even regionally where we sit <laughs> within the New England states, um, to exclude Massachusetts, Maine, and Vermont, we're excluding a lot of people who actually make their living here and do their work here. The other thing, because I do think we have to think about it, and we do want to uh, support our re local artists, is there may be things that come to us where it is appropriate, smaller things where we might limit, we might consider limiting. You know, I think it's hard to think of it on a $150,000 piece, but there might be a discussion in the future of something smaller where we might do something like but it was it was a good discussion, and I assume it'll come up again. Um, the other thing that came up is, um, I think it was Ken who brought this up. Will people have a chance, the public, to like vote on the finalists? And I don't think we had anticipated that, but again, I think that's going to come up, so we should talk about it. Yeah, I think in the discussion, particularly. Um... The artists who said it should be a regional artist. Uh, I, I think they also, I might be wrong, but I think it was also uh, the same group um, who felt that, hey, you know, we didn't get any vote on Sija Chen's art. And, uh, and, and if I can also add, when having served on that committee that selected that piece, um, there were some artists who came back at us when they, sure, one or two when they were not selected, I mean, they were in sort of like, you know, the last round, when, when they were not selected, um, they felt uh, like it was unfair because they were regional. Yeah. They were regional yeah. artists and they said, you so, know, yeah. they felt that they should have had first rights. Yeah. We also know, and Nancy has warned us about this before, about we've got to make these decisions really early so that we are clear in all of our RFP and everything else, whether finalists uh, will be made public, whether there will be public input on. I can certainly see making finalists public. I'm not sure I have ever seen this type of comp competition that has uh, a larger group voting on it, just like you wouldn't have where a juried art exhibit. Um, yeah, I but wouldn't go yeah, there. I, I, yeah. no. I personally would be really careful around that and only because we, um, when this committee was designed, the idea was to have experts serving on this committee who could make those decisions. Um, people who've either worked in, you know, in the arts or have direct experience with the city working in the arts. So um, when you have, when you open up the vote um, at the city, especially you get the same group of people weighing in and so you're always going to get their preferences and not others. And it's a very small select group. It's not, it's not the wider community yeah. that you would like to reach. So um, there are challenges around that. On that point, Lenny, when you are at for, for the endeavor, were people encouraged to write letters in support of one work or another or vision people who went to the presentations or um no i mean when cj chen was chosen she herself gave a talk uh, several public talks as i uh, made a point to attend uh, three of them right um i introduced her at the middle school i introduced her at the high school and stayed and hung out with the kids and worked with them and then there was a evening uh adult workshop on paper cutting i went to that it was a blast um and she and she had uh, invited the public um i believe through her, a website that you could send in ideas oh, to her right. yeah um if you had particular images that you wanted to be considered for her paper cut 
design. So she invited a lot of public input, but it wasn't voting. Right. But when she, but when she, when that, when she was chosen over other people who were um, submitted, had how where, where was there public input into that process? None. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I can I tell you how we did it? We we had um, all of the submissions online with the information redacted so people could see them on the Art Speak website. We also created two hard copy doctors, um of printouts of everything. And in both of those cases, we invited the feedback. We created a simplified document that was based on our rubric. We did not ask for a vote. We did not ask for them to tell us which preference they had. We asked for them to give us feedback on aesthetics, on material, on all the things we were looking for. And it was not really um, in terms of um, qualitative in terms of um, I want this one more than this. Feedback on each piece. So that's what we provided for the public, and nobody responded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hard. I don't know. Did you? Do you did that with finalists or with everything? Semi-finalists. The six finalists. That's pretty yeah. astounding. <laughs> I think it's an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. yeah, great idea, Don't Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting idea. But then That's even if no one responded, at least, you know, if someone you came back credit. to bite you after, you could say, Nobody hey, should have answered this. This opportunity was out there. And then, you know, sometimes people will say to something that's been heavily promoted, well, I didn't hear about it. I didn't know about it. And it's like, well... So then knocking on your door, yeah. you know, read the website, get the city newsletter. Yeah. We we looked at it as an opportunity to educate how to evaluate art the way we were evaluating it yeah. and what we offered. Very good. I, I think it's just important to remind people um, that like the Foundry Project was a public process. Yeah. What we're doing now is a public process. But the Sija Cheng sculpture was privately funded yeah. and was a private process and it was a gift to the city. Yeah. And so the city did not have a role in in that process. We had a role in just accepting a gift. That's right. And if anybody else wants to raise $180,000 and gift the city a sculpture, we will definitely consider it. It's a it's really important uh, distinction, and mm -hmm. it's also, and I think this did came up come up. Most of the public art that we see in Portsmouth is privately funded, yes. so you may not like it, but it it doesn't subject to a public <laughs> process. But I do see that with the Sija Chen sculpture, even though it was privately funded, that there was an attempt to kind of bring the community into oh, the discussion of yeah. what it was. And, you know, I mean, from what you said, I trying to think of what specifically did you all say about the African burial ground, but my understanding is the initial, you know, that the one that was selected really kind of nailed it in a way that no other product, no other pro projects did. So even though that artist was not local or, you know, right. it, it really, you know, it kind of really brought a lot of things together. I mean, I think that the idea of voting is so um, abysmally bad. That <laughs> it <horrifies> me personally. <laughs> well, it's kind of not in keeping with sort of the artistry of it, you know, so, but I, but Nancy's idea and Nancy, what Nancy described yeah, sounds Agreed. like a, a wonderful possibility yeah i mean if we could conceive conceptualize that so that there's a point where people have an opportunity to have that kind of way in and you know and it also it in a way it, it could be it could be helpful to us it could be it could be yeah although 
but it also would be a wonderful recourse when people say, well, how come we weren't told? Or we didn't have anything to say about it. It's right. public. And also, that kind of review on your own sometimes changes your mind about, about the appropriateness if you've actually like thought your way through it. I think so. Okay, good. Well, that I think that gave us some good ideas. Um, what I put here, I don't think we need to talk about. I just wanted to keep listing what our next steps are. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we've got to get more feedback. Um, anything else about Pierce Island? I just want to say about the next steps. You know, when Nancy and I sat down and proposed the, the timeline that we proposed, we both felt so you know, like we were being so radical in stretching it out so long and looking at it, looking at it last week and when those dates were, you know, from the point of view of the future, like, which is the now, I thought, oh my God, this is so soon. How did you think that we were kicking it down the road? <laughs> and and the uh, people there agreed with you. Yeah, that yeah. it's like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, so on to um, changes. Did you have a question? I just had a question about will we be having a pre-meeting before the 12th? Yeah. The people let's who are available yes. will um, be. Let's, when uh, uh, when this is uh, meeting is done, let's kind of look together at what we, when we might do that. Great. And also, would you still, would you like us to spread the word about the next um, opportunity? Yes, yes, far and wide. Um, so I just have that one thing in the button factory by the mailbox, but if anyone can think of other good places to put it, I mean, I hesitated about, you know, getting it up to Wallensford or, you know. Yeah, because, yeah, right. But I mean, I think social media groups uh, that we know, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I sent to like people in town who are involved in the cultural uh, community so. and but it doesn't hurt to get things from multiple people either saying please come to us so, do we have a visual or, or a, something for this i mean is it is there already a flyer a flyer is not the right word anymore but there's a press release that um is you know nicely set up and sean okay. said a little bit ago that's our that gives all the details okay but, great thank you for reminding me of that is there something already on social media on like the city website that we can city, that city can is share? um yes um it's right on the um there's a thing right on the opening page of the city well, i mean like on facebook on social media is it on the city's social media i I thought may it have been um last week i'll look i'll double check i think it was last week i'm pretty sure i saw it on instagram okay yeah. facebook and instagram facebook and instagram okay good but that personal touch of the i think you'd be interested in this you know really works um all right, let's go on to this report to the council. Did you have something else? You know? you... I did. I share some good news while yeah. I'm passing yeah, yeah. out. Mm. Uh, I understand there's some funds from the Hanover Garage. Oh, what? Uh, we <laughs> will be able to work with. Wow. Whoa. Oh, oh we have hey. projects. <laughs> How much? Well, that's a good question. Oh. There are, um, it looks like. Oh. Uh, another $150,000. What? Okay. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah. For that exception, say it. It's there and it's wow. uh, ready to be put where it needs to be put and available. That's Yay. incredible. <laughs> I have a very specific idea. That location, I don't know when is a good time to talk about that. Maybe put that on an agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's yes, you do, do Nancy. I remember that one. Yes. Oh. Let's do it. And there's some wonderful examples around the world of what people have done 
the garages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Nancy and Kate weigh in on this, but I want to sort of take people through this, see if these things make sense to you. We can obviously edit them, change them. We can do other changes as well. Um, the first thing is to consolidate in one ordinance, the public art ordinance, the public art review ordinance, and to bring that public art referral and acquisition, which is a policy, but to bring it into an ordinance. So, mm. you know, what, and so one reason to have everything as an ordinance is um, they got more teeth to them and they'll, you know, people really have to pay attention to them. Policies come and go with the councils, but this way um, everything would be in one place. I know how confusing it's been for all of us as we've tried to navigate across these different um, policies. And can you imagine how it is for like the, a member of the public trying to figure this out? So that's the first thing. And uh, certainly uh, the deputy city manager agreed with us that she thinks that's a good idea. Now, I know some of you uh, brought this up before. That's the second one. And that is retaining the definition of public art that was in the original percent for art ordinance, which brings in especially this paragraph here, which was uh, not part of park. Uh, mm -hmm. The enduring original artwork of highest quality and craftsmanship. I remember in our discussion that you, you really highlighted that. Um, and then this part about artworks being an integral part of the landscaping or architecture, considering the context. And I think that also really says a lot about what we've talked about. So trying to bring that in. And then number three is an idea that came up during our uh, Pierce Island discussion. Currently, for a project to kick off money, it has to be a minimum of 2 million, and then it's capped at 15 million. But the discussion was, isn't it time to raise the cap? So instead of getting 150 for Pierce Island, we would have had 300,000. Given that things are costing more, site mm -hmm. costs are a lot, these numbers are actually in ordinance. So, um, I think we should pause here and what do you think about that? Are, are we going too low? Is this about the right thing? Would you like to keep the minimum? You know, how to think about that. I understand why you would raise the maximum, but what was your sort of thinking in raising the minimum as well? Uh, sweetening the deal a little bit. Yeah. Gotcha. Just <laughs> you know, nothing costs five billion. No, I, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, just um, my small, um, small but m meaningful experience on the, I know it was privately funded, but we, originally the RFP for the um, John Bohenko Park was much higher and we didn't have the money. And then all these proposals came in for some of them were quite spectacular. And then we had to go back to, you know, the finalists and say, okay, what can you do for less money? And then some of those beautiful proposals came back and I was like, oh, you were our like second or third or maybe first pick, but now they were just acts because they, they couldn't do yeah. with that amount of money. So yeah, it's, it's expensive to produce. Well, and things that are going to be outdoors particularly have to be durable and right. um, well sited. And... So one way of, one value of giving a report to the council like this is if people start to have heartburn right away about this, <laughs> we'll, we'll know um, before it gets to the ordinance issue. Um, so is everybody kind of okay with those numbers? I, I just want to, just from having um, 
some lingering projects out there. I'm, I would be in favor of raising the ceiling because I think fewer projects with bigger impact is easier to manage uh, for a volunteer group. I'm not gonna say it's better or worse because art is art, even a little art is great. But in terms of managing now, like we just got this Hanover garage and you know, there's likely to be more. And so I'm just thinking in terms of capacity, raise the ceiling, bigger projects, it just might be easier to manage. That was my thought. Good idea. Yeah. Um, I will add that we have in the pipeline that I know of two, we have one project that's funded um, and that is the community campus refit for the Lister Academy. It's around 3 million, 3.14 million right now. So if you raise the floor, that's not gonna trigger. Um, but then the other is a potential police station, which mm -hmm. would trigger. I can't imagine getting it below 5 million, that project. <laughs> so that project will trigger no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have a lot of really huge projects currently in the pipeline because we've got that really, really big one. Yeah. So that, and so that's going to eat a lot of dollars for a while and we won't have a lot of really large projects for a while. So we, we maybe need to be a little cautious um, here about raising the floor too much. Good point. What about the skate park and the middle school? Uh, so I, I did receive a little feedback on that because I wrote down the list when we talked about it. I, I think we need, we, you, us need to confirm what the criteria are for triggering percent for art because there was this question about well if it's not a building i.e the lister academy is not a oh mm. significant renovations are in the ordinance are they yeah okay you have ordinances. so yeah so right so nancy i i'll i i guess i'll do some homework and, and bring it back to the group i'm not the ordinance expert but i think we need to look at that to be clear um because the skate park i don't know if the skate park qualifies well it does under the current ordinance mm -hmm. it does. um so we should okay. do it quickly <laughs> um the other thing is we did ask uh suzanne woodland if she would check on the uh, on the amounts of money delegated to these and what might be in the trust. So she'll be getting back to us on that. And and I have to say, just so everybody knows, that's been my concern is that I don't know, for example, the middle school project, I don't know if the funds in the past are always put into the trust. So we may be in a situation that um, the city would have to back fund if they, you know, and I, I don't know how easy that is to do. Well, that would Stage. come from undesignated fund balance or the sale of a property. We would often do that from the sale of a property. Um, we haven't sold something in a while, but um, that's how the Connie Bean, some stuff for the Connie Bean, you know, came about. Mm -hmm. um, but hearing hearing this discussion, I'm wondering if going to five million is too high, and whether we should stay at three million. Well, are we at two or three now? We're at two. Two. And whether we should so just, just move to three. You know, move to three. Mm -hmm. How long has it been at two, may I ask? Since 2007. Oh. Yeah, we need to. Inflation. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to decide that right now, but yeah. I think by our next meeting, we should. I mean, I think we should... We should sit with some of these. Just as somebody who doesn't have the, the deep background on what projects were done, it would be useful to know what was a three, you know, what is a three million dollar project versus a two million dollar project versus a five million dollar. Well, I can tell you, um, seems so cheap now, but fire station. Two costs seven million, as an example. Now it's hard to believe you could build anything nowadays for that, but at the time that cost seven million. The library was closer to ten million. Mm -hmm. 
middle school was 42 million with the Connie Bean Center. So you get to start to get right. But so the fire station, is that sculpture in front of the fire station something that was triggered by? No, because the fire commission did not want it. The so they get the tubes that, no, 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 no. So they raised that privately. And so, you know, I mean, they went through a very similar process. They had a committee, they did all of that. Fire station didn't want it? They didn't want the commission to be part of their building. They didn't want the dollars to be part of the building. They were the ones who uh, objected to that. And at the time we had a council that didn't want it either. So, um, but they raised mm. the money privately. And so then the money that would have, in, in the case of a situation where someone, a, a building, entity says we don't want percent for art does that mean that they get to keep well, that now, money? <laughs> nowadays <laughs> nowadays we're in a different position with that and that would go into the trust okay. but we still have the provision here that except under unusual circumstances the money should be used at the general location and we changed the ordinance when we wrote when when we passed the public art review committee ordinance. We changed the original ordinance as well so that they could no longer reject it. They could just use it in I an alternative place. location. Yeah. So um, so that's not an option anymore. And that helps. That means that yeah. all projects will fund. But also note that projects have gone up almost 50% in price in the last few years. Mm -hmm. The skate park started at around, I believe, $2 million and is ended up being 3 I mean, it... The, the prices are coming back 50% higher than anticipated. Um, and then they were just three or four. So let's think, let's think about these minimums. I, but your question is really helpful, Mara, because it gives us a sense of what, what's up, you know, what we're really dealing with, what we're really dealing with. Yeah. Is there um, a list somewhere that um, I, I could have being new to the committee that tells what uh, projects are already in the pipeline, like you're talking about the skate park, um, community campus, I mean, the things the, that- uh, the, the closest place to that is the um, CIP that, um, which is online because it gives all the cities for five years projected, um, the city's projected building projects. Mm -hmm. That would be useful for us all to yeah, it's to take a look at it. it's it's uh, online under planning department. Yeah. yeah, there's there's not necessarily a curated list, right? No. <laughs> to say, oh, here's one through ten. No, I, <clears throat> I'm not sure I put the question clearly, but people mentioned artwork that's already, or I think maybe it was Kate that mentioned some things that were already. Well, they're on this in, list because they're in the section on buildings and facilities, so you can see what's planned. Okay. And you can see what the cost looks like. Okay. So that'll give you a okay. A good that doesn't mean that everything will be built at that time or whatever, but it gives you an estimate. All right. So city website, CIP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the planning department. Capital improvement plan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, a couple more things here. One thing we should look at, and you know, Lenny, I don't, you wouldn't have the ordinances, but these are online as well. It, how we might think about flexibility and use of funds and what language we might use to, um, one of the things that the deputy city manager mentioned to us is she thought we might want to build in more flexibility in the use of funds. So we should look at that language and consider what we might suggest. Can you clarify? Well, the discussion we just had, uh, maybe if uh, we don't, maybe we want to be able to use, like I'll use the garage as an example, maybe we'd like to be able to use 30% of those funds on the uh, new, um, the real trail. We don't really have that flexibility right now. Okay. I don't so, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, mm -hmm. but it's something we should talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And 
I have really mixed feelings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, number five. This is just clean up. Uh, since we now have park, we can bring this. There's language around an ad hoc committee and all that. We can bring that together. Number six. Sean has been really clear with us that he is a liaison and not a member of the committee. <laughs> <laughs> now, the language is kind of ambiguous about that. It sort of makes him a member of the committee, which would mean voting and all that, which is unusual in a right in that role. And we should also clarify that so um, so that it's clear that we don't count as number as part of the Absolutely. number. Absolutely, right. Well. Yeah, right. That's right. And for quorum purposes. Quorum, right. For voting, etc. Number seven is when you heard me rail about, which is <laughs> that it isn't just we don't only look at public art as if it was on municipal property, but we also have review on public art projects that are part of land use board approvals. <laughs> and so that since we've gotten that agreement, we might as well get it in the ordinance. You mean like a private project, someone building a hotel or something? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, and then, uh, and, and number eight's really the same. Number nine, we did, We don't really yeah. have anything about deaccessioning yeah. or, you know, let's say something becomes obsolete. Um, Hmm. Damaged. Damaged. Beyond repair. Yeah. You know, a, a great example of this is, remember, the whale wall, which was done on private property without any approvals. Nowadays, that would have to go through the HDC. I, I mean, it should have back then, too, but it didn't. It was just done privately and then became such an eyesore. But there's really no authority. No one had any possibility to do anything about that. And now, of course, the building's being taken down. So this deaccessioning notion, we need to get some language in there. It's in the policy, but it's not in an ordinance. That's right. Hmm. That's right. So I would say we should, everybody kind of do some thinking about these, go back and check your you know, ordinances, see what you think, see if you find anything else. And I, Jen, I apologize. I said I was going to, we were going to have you talk before we did this, That's but right. uh, you can add to what you have all, all found. Well, I think we went through and just did, because again, we talked about the fact that our uh, criteria for public art is an organic uh, document. We had to really add because we got surprised because we didn't have any language about donated art in there. So what um, Mara and I did is we took everything, or we took the language that was in the policy and then just added it to say, this would be an addendum to it. So this would be yet one more little like bullet line in there. Okay. God so it's a good, it's a cross reference that helps. Correct. Good. Okay. So that's what we did is we took that from the, um, you know, from the, uh, policy and put it into our criteria for public art, which again, you can kind of read it. It says only public art, suitable donations, everything that was in there did that. And again, that's where the D, which I, that word, I cannot get out of this, my mouth, deaccession. De <laughs> I just can't get that out for some reason. That one was in there. Okay. So it's, it was in as, like I said, there, but it wasn't in ours. And never having seen this before, or perhaps I did, but I didn't <laughs> know I was seeing it. <laughs> it was interesting because there's so much of what when we came up with the um, guidelines, mm -hmm. there's so much of this that has made it over to that. But it was it we felt that it would be useful to. You know, question of what you do with this if it's something that's donated and i think it's good to have that in the guidelines because that's a standalone piece that people mm -hmm. might like take off the website so they don't have to cross-reference a bunch of things yeah right so yeah 
So he's like, I said, this language came from that. I don't know if you want to vote on it. You want to take a look at it and, and think about look. it. We should and take a look at it. Take a look. Take a look because it's, again, it's, it kind of comes from that. I don't know if we have to do that after we get the, you know, everything over the report to the council. I'm not sure about that, but it, it's been written. Take a look at it. We can talk about it next time. Okay. And That's I think it'll be a good idea. idea just so that we do it all at once. Mm -hmm. And I just, know, we kind of considered those in, in a way, I mean, just organically when we were talking about the call Austin Hyatt piece. Yeah. So. Just because I'm still confused between all the different documents, are the guidelines which we established referenced in the policy or ordinance, or they're completely standalone and the ordinance doesn't say committee will work according to guidelines. It does, doesn't it say that the committee um, needs to develop? <laughs> yes, I think it's, that's what it says. I just wonder whether we should think about that as well. If the guidelines are, are really a guiding document, does that, should it be baked in somehow or, or not? Or we, you know, we would still have flexibility to change and update them, but I don't know. Yeah, it says in the ordinance. Established guidelines. Yes. Okay. For review of public art. So we've done okay. that. So that was part of our charge and have it straight forward. Okay. Good. Good. Great. Good thing to bring up. That's good. So um, we'll take a look at them. And, it, and again, at our next meeting, we'll get all these things buttoned down. Mm -hmm and make this report to the council as a request for the legal department to bring all this together. But and to come back to a piece of all of it that was a surprise um, in reading that um, ordinance 22, 20, whatever, you know, about the lot that there is a person in the library who's keeping an inventory. I think it would be, you know, I would love to see it, and I think we should see it and know what's on it and how to make sure that items get on it. Yeah, let's invite Nicole. If Nicole yeah. is the right person, she'll tell us yeah. to come and just give us that update. Yeah. I think that'd be good. And then the one other thing there was um, decorative sidewalks. Both Nancy and Ellen brought to my attention um, a change in policy um do you want to Nancy? you have a little more information about even some funding available so maybe describe what that is and oh, we thought it's something we can take up in our next meeting so i i confess i didn't thoroughly read i knew i couldn't attend um but the creative communities network sent out information about opportunities um, I think they sent out information about opportunities to for people that want to do creative things with their sidewalks I don't I mean crosswalks I don't know if any of you have been to recently but they painted all of their crosswork crosswalks and then stenciled in um 400th for their 400th anniversary this year and um it was all over their downtown so I forwarded the email that I got to the Creative Community Network by Chris because Councillor Cook is aware of this also. Um, maybe a year or two ago when there was uh, one of the white nationalist registered hate groups in Hampshire, some um, vandalism to a couple of our LGBTQ businesses and establishments downtown, um, a community member, executive director post rep, raised $10,000 online from just the general public for a rainbow crosswalk to stand up to the hate and show support. And she still has those funds. At the time, the city told her that they couldn't do anything painting crosswalks. I don't know how Dover painted theirs. I don't know what's going on with the Creative Communities Network, but we, um, Kathleen still has those funds and she is eager to spend them. Otherwise, she has to give them back to all the donors. So 
I thought it would be interesting to um, invite her to come and see what she has to say about the money and how potentially, it, if we wanted to, we could take on the project of a rainbow walk using her funds. Yeah. So that would be a gift, right? Yes. That'd be a gift. Yeah. Yes. And I've been discussing this with her for two years now since <laughs> she raised the money. And this has been uh, an ongoing challenge. The federal guidelines for roadways used to say that you couldn't paint anything, any alternative colors, but they just changed. And I actually saw the article that those changed at the end of last year. So we're now in a position that there, it's even recommended that some painting um, can slow traffic. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, painting in art ways can can slow traffic. So this might be another means of traffic calming, but <laughs> also um, she has the funds and she had wanted to donate them and she had waited until this committee was around. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then we just wanted to still make sure that she could donate them to the trust. And so if she does that, and um, if the committee is willing to take on that charge, then the committee could make a recommendation to the council to accept yeah. the donate donation. That's, That's a all. great idea. Um, and do you think we should ask Kathleen just as a courtesy to maybe come or zoom into our next meeting? So um, do you want to invite her to do that? Yes, Kate? I can do that. Yeah. Um, was there a location and or design um, associated with those funds? It was just uh, no, because the city they couldn't do it. But I just, you know, fundraising, you know, what donors might be expecting. Was there some sort of visual or expectation that the the gift might gift givers might have? These are great questions for the fundraiser, but I believe it was for lit quite literally a rainbow crosswalk. Like that's as much detail. Cool. Mm -hmm. But let's let her, let's let her give us all the details. And this could be a perfect opportunity for the art student group mm -hmm. or maybe a local artist. You know, these are opportunities where we could be much more prescriptive and mm -hmm. short term. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's great. So uh, maybe if we have Kathleen in our next meeting, I'm going to suggest that we're going to have a lot of Pierce Island stuff to do at our next meeting. So maybe Nicole uh, at a subsequent meeting, because I think we're going to want to start bringing together all those Pierce Island themes to figure out what we want to lift up um, for an RFP. And I was going to suggest two meetings in February, but I can't quite figure out how to do it. So, <laughs> it's a short month. Especially if we're doing our doing the 12th and the 15th um, part today. So I will be out of town for two weeks. But but you'll be back. But I'll be back. But then I'll be um, right And I'll be out of town on the 28th. Okay. Oh. Well. <laughs> um, so I think uh, a few of us will stay to kind of figure out what we're going to do on the 12th um, and 15th, maybe get a date. But otherwise, I think we can adjourn the meeting. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I have names, please? Jen? Uh, I motioned and Jen second. OK, thank you. <laughs> a couple quick questions. Um, I I didn't quite catch a couple things. What time is the um, event for arts committees at the music hall? Seventh. Five thirty to seven. Five thirty. Okay. And we had said that a park committee member could perhaps zoom into the meeting council this Monday. Do you know who that? Yeah, I, I will either plan to be there or...